Welcome to Fourth Right and a column and commentary session on last week's column. When you spend a long time in public service, you know your every move is under scrutiny. And so when the governor posted a tweet claiming great progress last year, it, it should be no surprise that somebody looked up the numbers. I didn't start this column expecting any particular outcome, although I had a hunch that at least some of the statistics may not back up the governor's claims. My mom, who will be 91 years old next week, was the first to comment after reading the paper last Thursday morning, texting, good column, but you won't be allowed at any more of his receptions with a laughing emoji, because, as it turned out, the headline captured the column perfectly. Inslee's making big strides backward. As published Thursday, January 26, 2023, in the Spokesman Review. In the middle of his third term and equivocating about an unprecedented fourth term, this was Governor Jay Inslee's cheerful New Year's tweet. Goodbye 22, hello 23, we've made important strides forward on several difficult issues, homelessness, climate change, choice, equity, gun violence, the pandemic, Together, I know we can make good things happen in the new year. So, let's look at those strides since he first took the oath of office in January 2013. According to the 2012 HUD Annual Homeless Assessment Report to Congress, Washington's homelessness rate dropped 12.6% over the previous five years from 2007 to 2012, putting us in the top five states for strides forward at the beginning of Inslee's tenure. But by November 2015, rising homelessness led Seattle and King County to declare a state of emergency. In HUD's 2022 report, Washington made the list of five states with the largest increase, with the homelessness rate up by 7.8%. Big strides. Backward. What was stopping you for the first 10 years, Cairo radio host Brandy Cruz asked last week in a live interview. Quote, Obviously, it wasn't helpful when I had a legislature under Republican control that wouldn't pay a dollar to see a mouse eat a bale of hay, so that made it a little more difficult early in my term, end quote, Inslee said. The Washington legislature hasn't been under Republican control since 1997 to 1998, and blaming Republicans is as ridiculous as the mouse analogy when the last Republican governor left office in 1985. Inslee pivoted the interview to push his $4 billion housing bond as fundamental to solving homelessness and a backlog of unmet housing need. Might have been wise to consider that before declaring in March 26, 2020, construction is not considered to be an essential activity. So, no surprise that shutting down half the construction season in 2020 meant not as many houses in 2022. Mental health and chemical addiction are fundamental issues for the hardest to house, so surely we've made great strides on mental health care. Or not. Western State Hospital lost its federal certification in 2018 after what was described by a Seattle Times editorial at the time as the legislature, quote, throwing money at the problem, end quote. The problem was management, not money, and the editorial board concluded by saying, quote, Almost six years into his tenure as governor, Inslee deserves the blame for the state's mental health debacle that his administration has lacked the urgency to address for too long, end quote. But hey, climate change, that's his gig, right? Must be making strides forward there. According to his 2008 book, Apollo's Fire, Igniting America's Clean Energy Economy, by now, Washington should be a solar generation powerhouse. Public transit ridership will be up, but coal-fired generators will still be operating. Except, according to an analysis from Todd Myers of the Washington Policy Center, solar power is about 14% of Inslee's predicted boom. Public transit ridership is down and not on track to double by 2028, as Inslee had claimed, and Inslee completely miss missed the shift to natural gas power generation. Granted, it's hard to predict the future. So how about monitoring the present? Governor Inslee launched Results Washington in 2013 to track progress on sustainable energy in a clean environment, announcing, quoting from his uh, press release, 
Results, Washington will give us the data we need to learn from what is working, fix what's broken, and direct resources to our most important priorities, end quote. Except if you check the Results Washington website in 2023, it says, we are currently working to identify relevant metrics for each goal area. We plan to publish these metrics by the end of 2022. There's no dashboard, but in 2018, KUOW reported, Washington's greenhouse gas emissions rose 1.7% in 2016 and remained virtually unchanged in 2017 at 97.5 million tons. Striding right along like a mouse dodging to evade a hawk. So how about choice? Not vaccine choice, of course. Washington made access to abortion legal before Roe v. Wade and nothing has changed. And I'm pro-life, but I have no problem with abortion being legal as long as we also agree on a date acknowledging it's a human life being aborted. Women can be trusted to make choices within the same ethical framework as we accept for any end of life decision. In 2023, Inslee testified for a constitutional amendment to make abortion always legal for any reason. In a news release after the hearing, Senator Mike Padden, a Republican of Spokane Valley, said, As we saw during testimony today on this divisive and controversial proposal, 622 people signed up against SJR 8202, while only 325 were in favor of it. I think most Washingtonians, even those who generally support abortion, would find this proposal too extreme and unacceptable. End quote. Equity. It's hard to accept Governor Inslee has a commitment to equity after 975 days of rejecting legislative input on the inequitable outcomes of his dictates. Gun violence? According to the Washington Association of Sheriffs and Police Chiefs annual reports, aggravated assault has gone up every year since 2012. Assaults with personal weapons, hands and feet, exceeded assaults with firearms through 2020, in 2021, for the first time, firearms use in aggravated assault jumped by 1.9 times and passed personal weapons in raw numbers. Consensus on why may be difficult, but trends are clearly striding in the wrong direction. Then there's the pandemic. The Mountain States Policy Center compared five western states, Washington, Idaho, Montana, Utah, and Wyoming, and concluded Washington had a lower rate of population affected by COVID-19. That's a step forward. But if one considers the lifelong impacts of educational losses due to lengthy shutdowns of in-person learning, Washington takes a step back. Was it a fair trade-off? The same report points out the economic hit. We ranked in the top 12 nationally in unemployment. Which reminds me, how much of that hundreds of millions of dollars does Inslee's Employment Security Department get back from the Nigerian scammers? That was a real step backward. So, yeah, pretty much not expecting any invitations to the governor's mansion. Did have one grumpy commenter who had no rebuttal to the numbers. Um, a, lot of, a lot of folks who appreciated the column, but, you know, what can you say? The fact check speaks for itself. So I'm going to go over a few of the resources, and, and on the Substack page, I'll, I'll post the, uh, the complete links to where, I, where those numbers come from. And I'm happy to entertain any, any rebuttal if anybody wants to comment. On um, homelessness, I went to the 2012 HUD report and the 2022 HUD report. Those reports are prepared off of the point-in-time count, which just took place last week. I participated this last week for the first time. That was an interesting experience. I don't think I can judge the whole thing based on one half day's uh, volunteering. But clearly it's a difficult, difficult job because you're trying to find people who don't often don't want to be found, uh, who are anywhere and everywhere. Uh, and as one of, one of the young student nurses that I was, was working with said, if someone really doesn't want to be found, should we really be trying to chase them down? Uh, it's a fair question. It's clearly a difficult uh, count to do, but again, it does. It, the trends are valuable. Uh, the The report is done in the same way and has been since 2007, 2012 to 2022. We went from being in the top five for best progress to being in the uh, 
bottom five for uh, worst progress. So not a good place to be. Um, the Seattle Times report, on, uh, I just took the Seattle Times report on the state of emergency declaration in November 2015. The mayor, Ed Murray of Seattle and Dow Constantine of King County declared a state of emergency over homelessness. Just two years after Inslee took office. Um, there's a link, there'll be a link on the Substack to the Cairo radio interview where somehow he came up with that legislature under Republican control that wouldn't pay a dollar to see a mouse eat a bale of hay. I have no idea what that's supposed to mean. That's very odd on a number of counts. Um, it did it did trigger me looking at the uh, back the partisan control of the legislature. I, I there is there's no problem in this state that you can rationally blame on Republicans. Republicans have not had control, have not had uh, control of the agenda, the narrative, the legislature, the governor's mansion. Uh, if you don't like what's going on in Washington right now, it's the Democratic Party that's had control, so they get the responsibility. Um, the uh, the housing and construction is non-essential. Uh, the, the full quote of what he said was, in general, commercial and residential construction is not authorized under the proclamation because construction is not considered to be an essential activity. That caused all sorts of consternation. I know I wrote a column on it at the time. Um, you know, publicly funded housing projects were able to continue, but all private housing and private construction was shut down as if it made any difference scientifically to, to the virus. I mean, there was no... There was no basis for that other than politics. Uh, and he finally did relent and let, uh, let construction continue. Um, on the mental health system, it was interesting to see that the, the Seattle Times editorial had called the legislature out for throwing money at the problem when apparently uh, Governor Inslee was saying the, the legislature wouldn't spend any money. Uh, but it was never about the money. It was about the management. And uh, we still have problems at Western State Hospital. They're interfering with the ability of the state to do forensic evaluations of people who have been arrested for crimes and, and uh, deserve an evaluation of their mental state before they are brought up on charges. It's th that there's nothing about that that's gotten better in the last, uh, in the last year. Uh, climate change. I, uh, I have to admit, I didn't realize that the governor had had co-authored a book in 2008 with a whole lot of predictions and but predictions are hard on the other hand he announced with with a with a lot of pride in September 2013 after he'd been in office for for the for the first nine months of his first term um, that uh, here, here's the longer quote once fully in place results Washington will make it easier than ever for state leaders to spot trends and make data-driven decisions that improve quality and speed up service delivery. It will lead to better informed budget and policy decisions. It will also make it possible for Washingtonians to see for themselves how well state government and its many partners, such as school districts, local governments, and community organizations, deliver services and meet key performance goals. Um, it, it never has. It's 10 years, still not working, they, they just took down any attempt at having any kind of a dashboard, and that's where Results Washington now says they're still trying to figure out what the metrics are. Ten years later, don't even know what they're going to measure. Um, there are people doing measurements, and that's where KUOW uh, took, took their, uh, made their report basing that, uh, saying that Washington State's carbon emissions remain stubbornly high despite the efforts of Jay Inslee and others to rein in the climate wrecking pollution, according to the latest numbers from the Washington Department of Ecology. So there are numbers out there, but they're just, they're not put out there where everybody can see them clearly. Um, and on choice, you know, we would make better progress in actually supporting women if instead of focusing and arguing over just one of the many options faced by a pregnant woman, we focused on the nature of the choice it does end a life, and how to make the most life-affirming choice, the natural first choice, and support women in making that choice. We don't need to be, we don't need any more fear-mongering uh, over abortion. That's that's not happening. Republicans don't control the, the legislature. Uh, the citizens of Washington spoke by initiative. We have what we have. There's no push to change that. 
there's just a whole lot of fear mongering from uh, Democrats who, you know, frankly, raise a lot of money off the issue. And on equity, I, yeah, I couldn't even find a proxy measurement for, for equity. I've, we don't even, there's not even an agreement on exactly what that means. If, if equity means uh, equality of the playing field, well, we've pretty much taken care of the playing field. If it's equity of outcomes, that's just an unrealistic, unrealistic expectation. So, went to gun violence. I used crime as a proxy for whether we made strides forward on gun violence because that's that's what really hits people. Uh, that's what people are concerned about. That's what causes the fear. And um, since we heard for all during the riots of 2020 that property damage doesn't count, what really counts is crimes against persons. I look at the aggravated assault statistics. What actually really surprised me about looking at that is that uh, until 2021, Every year up until 2021, there were far more uh, aggravated assaults involving hands and feet than firearms. Firearms were lagging behind. And in this last year, the year that Governor Inslee is priding himself on great strides, that's the year that firearms actually surpassed hands and feet uh, as the weapon being used for the aggravated assault. And it did that in a year when it jumped by, by one, a factor of 1.9. Up until then, um, in no other year did the aggravated assault statistics jump like that. So there's something going on there. There's something going wrong there, but it's certainly not a stride in the right direction. Um, those, those, uh, the links will be in the substack. There, it's really interesting to look at those reports. And lastly, on the pandemic, you know, it really is about trade-offs. Decisions are always about trade-offs. Um, so far, the impact on the next generation's education and what we know about the long-term impact of a poor educational foundation on lifetime earnings and, uh, and satisfaction is not looking positive. On the other hand, parents gained insights into the school system and curriculum on a never-before-possible possible level of intimacy since everybody had a, a window into the classroom. The relationship between school and home is never going back the way it was. And the legislature has been forever changed as well by the pandemic. After fighting against remote testimony for years, it's, it's here to stay, allowing more voices and a greater diversity of voices to be heard, whether the passes are open or closed, uh, whether they're closed because WashDOT lacks adequate plow drivers or it's just a lot of snow and spinouts, or whether the problem is Governor Inslee continuing to require potential state employees to accept as a rite of passage being jabbed with an experimental vaccine that turned out to be only marginally effective uh, against the version of the virus that was circulating two years ago. Uh, and the virus has moved on, and it's time for us to move on as well. Uh, and it's time to end that vaccine mandate. Let's have a little, let's have a little choice, shall we? And a little informed choice, looking at what, uh, what all the options are and and how they affect each individual person in their life. A little bit of choice would be a good thing. Uh, thank you for joining me on Substack. Hope that you subscribe, and uh, I will uh, continue to put these column and commentary as well as I am looking for a local, uh, local folks who have a story to tell. I uh, have one coming up uh, later this week, I hope, a couple, and uh, if you subscribe, you'll get a notice when there is some new content. Thanks for joining me.